السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين وتابعيهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد we reached with الإمام ابن القيم عليه رحمة الله to the benefit number 53 of the benefits of الذكر after he spoke about al dhikr after explaining the hadith of al harith al ash'ari he started listing the benefits of dhikr and yesterday we finished benefit number 52 which was that the sittings of dhikr are the sittings of the angels benefit number 53 is that allah azza wa jal boasts the angels with those who remember him as Al Imam Muslim narrated in his Sahih from Abi Sa'id Al Khudri, radiallahu anhu, who said that Muawiyah, Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, radiallahu anhu, he came out to, uh, uh, on a circle in the masjid. There was a circle in the masjid. So he said, What made you sit? He asked them, What made you sit? They said, We sat remembering Allah. Azzawajal. He said, By Allah. Nothing made you sit except that, just to remember Allah. They said, by Allah, nothing made us sit except that. So he said, uh, I surely did not ask you to make an oath uh, out of me doubting you or accusing you. But uh, there was uh, no one uh, who has my status, who has my position with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who was less in terms of narrating hadith uh, from him uh, no one uh, who had my status who narrated less than me the companions in his level, in his status they narrated more from Rasulullah Sallallahu he narrated, he, he says about himself, narrated the least, right? He said, and surely that the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, came out upon a circle of his companions, and he said, what made you sit? And they said, we sat, uh, they said, we sat remembering Allah Azza wa and praising him for what he guided us to al-Islam, and favored us with it. So he said, Allah ma ajlasakum illa dhak. Yani Rasulullah sallam said to them, By Allah, nothing made you sit except that. They said, By Allah, nothing made us sit except that. So he said to them, As for me, surely I have not, I did not ask you to make an oath out of me doubting you, accusing you. But Jibreel, came to me and he informed me that Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala he boasts with you the angels he boasts with you the angels so al-imam ibn al-qayyim he said that this boasting from the lord tabaraka wa ta'ala and he boasts the angel with those servants of his who are sitting and remembering him subhanahu wa ta'ala this Boasting from the Lord Tabaraka wa Taala is a proof for the nobility of the remembrance uh, with Him Subhanahu wa Taala, and that He loves it, and that it that is dhikr, that dhikr has uh, a special uh, quality, uh, or it has excellence, special excellence uh, over the others of the deeds over the others of the deeds and in Rasulullah Sallallahu he came out he asked him why you sat they said we sat to remember Allah by Allah nothing made you sit except that they answered he said I did not ask you to make an oath out of me doubting you but then the reason is that Jibreel came down saying to the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi that Allah is boasting the angel with those companions who sat to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this shows the high status uh, of dhikr in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala benefit number 54 
is that the one who is uh, constantly remembering Allah, the word he used is mudmin. Mudmin is like addicted, right? The one who is so attached to a dhikr, he is doing it continuously, he will enter paradise laughing. He will enter paradise laughing. As Ibn Abi Dunya narrated from Abdul Rahman ibn Mahdi, from Mu'ayya ibn, ibn Salih, from Abdul Rahman ibn Jubair ibn Nufayr al-Hadrami, from his father, from Abi Darda, the companion, radiallahu anhu. He said, and this is an authentic statement from Abu Darda. This is an authentic statement from this companion, uh, radiallahu anhu. Uh, this statement says the ones whose uh, the ones whose tongues are uh, moist of the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal, the one of them will enter paradise while laughing. Hmm? Did they translate that in your uh, number? Okay, so. Uh, this is an authentic statement from Abu Darda radiallahu anhu. This is not a hadith from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa but this is a statement of a companion. And this is something that he cannot say on his own. Right? The fact that it is authentic, it has a great weight, it would reach even up to the level of the hadith that is narrated from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa because this is something he wouldn't know just by opinion, by mere opinion. It's something that comes from the revelation. Uh, benefit number 55 is that all the deeds are legislated to establish the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. And uh, what is meant by those deeds, what, what is meant by them is to achieve the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَأَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِذِكْرِ Surah Taha, ayah number 14. This is now, the speech is directed towards Prophet Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Establish the prayer for my remembrance. For my remembrance. Now, here, establish the prayer for my remembrance. He mentioned different meanings. One of them is my remembrance, so that I will remember you, right? So you establish the prayer, so Allah will mention you. You mention Allah, Allah mentions you, right? So my remembrance, yani, uh, uh, me remembering you, me mentioning you, ya Musa, oh Musa, establish the prayer so that I will mention you, right? That's one meaning, طيب? And the second meaning, mudaf ila al-maf'ul, Meaning, so that you will remember me by it. Establish the prayer, O Musa, والسلام, so that you, Musa, will remember me. You will mention me. By establishing the prayer, you mention your Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the second meaning. Right? So here, uh, also, he mentions a third uh, meaning. He says that it is here li dhikri for my remembrance, right? Yani the previous uh, meaning, yani because so that you will remember me, right? The lamb, they say the lamb of at ta'lil, the lamb of the reason why, right? Establish the prayer li dhikri so that you will remember me, that is. Right? The. Hmm? Even in English. <laughs> Even in English, it works both ways. Right? So the first meaning for my remembrance, so that Allah will remember, Allah will mention Him. The second meaning is establish the prayer so you will remember me, O Musa. Right? Now, the third meaning is that they said this lamb is the lamb of the time. 
right? Meaning, establish the prayer at the time of remembering me. At the time of remembering me, right? At the time of remembering me. Like the statement of Allah, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَىٰ غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 78. Establish the prayer for the time when the sun moves, right? Uh, when the sun moves from uh, the sky up to the غسق الليل, the darkness of the night. And then it says, وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ And the uh, recitation of uh, Al-Fajr, يعني صلاة الفجر. Right? So this ayah actually in Surah Al-Isra, it mentioned the three times for the Salah. The time when the sun moves from the zenith, is the, then the time of Dhuhr comes, and that is the time also for Dhuhr and Asr, for the one who has an excuse. Then Ghasaq al-Layl, the darkness of the night, that is the time for Maghrib and Isha, for the one who has an excuse. And Quran al-Fajr, that's the time of Fajr, right? the Fajr prayer. Okay, so in the Quran, the timings that are mentioned are only the three times and these are the times for the one who has an excuse. Right? As for the detailed timings of the Salah, this is only known through the Sunnah. This is only known through the Sunnah. طيب. But then he brought this ayah here to uh, mention the Lamb of the time. Right? لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ For the time when the sun moves, right? This la, lam, li, duluk shams, that's what it means. So some said, aqim is salata li dhikri, establish the prayer for remembering me, for the time when you remember me, right? At the time when you remember me, establish the prayer. Also, uh, the statement of Allah, Surah Al-Anbiya 47, وَنَضَعُ الْمَوَازِينَ الْقِسْطَ لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ We set up the just balances for, يعني at the time of the day of judgment. لِيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ At the time, right? He said, and this meaning is true, this meaning is true, it is meant by this ayah, by this verse. But to explain it with it, and that this is its meaning, then this is something to be uh, looked at or to be considered. And you cannot limit the meaning to only the time. Now, there is the famous hadith. Uh, there is the famous hadith uh, that says, Man uh, nama لا كفارة لها إلا ذلك فإن الله يقول أقم الصلاة لذكره. This is an authentic hadith. إن شاء الله more or less this is what رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم said. It's a well known authentic hadith. It says that the one who sleeps from a prayer or forgot it, then let him pray it when he remembers it. There is no expiation for it except that. For surely Allah says, establish the prayer at the time of remembrance, right? For my remembrance, at the time when you remember me, right? So this definitely, this even hadith shows that this is one of the meanings that are meant, no doubt. Yani let's say someone, he got busy or something happened to him, he forgot a salah. He forgot to pray it. What does he do? At the time when he remembers that he did not pray, he will pray that prayer. Even يعني, 50 years ago. <laughs> you know, now you remember, oh, that day I did not pray Salat al-Fajr. Now you get up and pray it now. This is the time for it. You pray it right now. Right? <laughs> so at the time when you remember, then you pray the prayer. So the Shaykh said that this lamb of the time, at the time of remembering me, right, is meant by the ayah. But to restrict and limit the meaning of the ayah to just this, uh, 
this is something to be considered, he said. Um, now he mentions some things that uh, pertain to the language and grammar. I will, I will skip that. He said that the, uh, the strongest position regarding this ayah, أقم الصلاة لذكري, establish the prayer for my remembrance, uh, is that it is the lamb of the reason that this lamb here for my remember so so that right here is the lamb of the reason meaning establish the prayer so that you will remember me so that you will remember me now he said what necessitates from this is that establishing it establishing the prayer will be at the time of remembering him subhanahu wa ta'ala Yani if you establish the prayer for the sake of remembering Allah, this necessitates that you will establish it for the sake of Allah at the time when you remember Allah. Right? This by necessitation. Right? By necessitation. Now, if the servant mentions his Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala, hmm, then... Allah's mention of his servant precedes him remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned him, he inspired him to remember him. Allah, when he mentioned the servant, he inspired the servant to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all the three meanings are true. فَالْمَعَانِ الثَّلَثَ حَقْ all three meanings are true. So, you establish the prayers for the sake of remembering Allah. When you remember Allah, and this necessitates that Allah mentioned you before you remember Him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you wouldn't remember Him except after He mentions you. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, all three meanings are true, He said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said also utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al-kitab recite that which is revealed to you of the book O Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam wa aqim salah and establish the prayer inna as-salata tanha ani al-fahsha'i wal-munkar surely as-salah the prayer forbids one from obscene matters and evil obscene and evil uh, matters الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر and the remembrance of Allah is greatest right or greater hmm? now so this is in Surah Al-Ankabut 45 this is a, a very well known ayah it's a very well known ayah some uh, khatibs they choose to use it at the end of the khutbah uh, al-jumu'ah it, it is not a sunnah but this is how they choose, so uh, يعني, it is famous. So here, recite what has been revealed to you of the book and establish the prayer. Surely the prayer forbids one from obscene and evil matters and the remembrance of Allah is greater, is greatest. The remembrance of Allah is greater or greatest. Greater than what? And greatest in relation to what? What is the meaning? Right? He said, it is said that the meaning is that you in the salah, you remember Allah. And he mentions the one who mentions him. You in the salah, you mention and remember Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is mentioning, he will mention the one who mentions him. Huwa dhakirun man dhakara. And surely, Allah's mention for you is greater than you mentioning Him. Right? وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ You establish the prayer, you mention Allah. The fact that you mention Allah, this means Allah will mention you. اذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ Mention me, I will mention you. Right? So, the fact that Allah mentions you, this is greater than you mentioning Allah. Right? Uh, so the 
mention of Allah Azza wa Jal for you or of you is greater than you mentioning him. And this is narrated from Ibn Abbas and Salman and Abi Darda and Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhum. And uh, Ibn Abi Dunya, he mentioned it from Fudayr ibn Marzuq from Atiyah uh, regarding um, uh, regarding wala dhikrullah akbar and uh, the mention of Allah is greater. He said, this is the statement of Allah Ta'ala, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ So mention me, I will mention you. And he is explaining the Quran with the Quran. Hmm? So the mention of Allah Azza wa Jal uh, of you, him mentioning you is greater than you mentioning him. Also, uh, Ibn Zayd and Qatada, they said the meaning is akbar min kulli shay. That the remembrance of Allah, the mention of Allah is greater than everything. Is greater than everything. It was said to Salman, radiallahu an, which of the deeds is best? Which of the deeds is best? So he answered, don't you recite the Quran? Akbar. And mentioning Allah is greatest. Right? This is an authentic narration from him. That he was asked, Afdal al-A'mal, what is the best of the deeds? He said, don't you recite the Quran? Akbar. And the best of the deeds is mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what testifies to this hadith is the hadith of Abid Darda that has passed. This hadith has been mentioned few times now, which is, shall I not inform you of the best of your deeds, most purifying for you with your Lord and better for you than to spend gold and silver, so on and so forth, that hadith, and better than for you to meet your enemy and chop off their necks. They chop off the necks. They said, what is dhikrullah, right? So this is supporting this meaning. Shaykh al-Islam, Abu al-Abbas, Qaddas Allah Ruha, this is Ibn Taymiyyah. He used to say that the correct position is that the meaning of the ayah, once again, this is the ayah of Surah Al-Ankabut, recite what has been revealed to you of the book and establish the prayer. Surely the prayer forbids one from obscene matters and sins or evil and the mention the remembrance of Allah is greater right Shaykh al-Islam he says the correct meaning of this ayah according to him the correct position regarding it is that the meaning of the ayah is that as-salah has two objectives behind it two great objectives behind it one of them is greater than the other. For the prayer forbids from obscene matters and sins and evil. And it's also, the salah is also inclusive of the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. And what it involves of the remembrance of Allah is greater than it forbidding one from obscene and evil matters. Right? Establish what has been revealed to you of the book and uh, 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 recite what has been revealed to you of the book and establish the prayer. Surely, the prayer forbids one from obscene and evil matters. Right? And the remembrance of Allah is greater or greatest. So he said that the salah has two goals behind it to forbid you from evil and sins and obscene matters and to remember Allah with it and remembering Allah in the salah this objective this goal is greater than it stopping you from getting involved in sins and disobediences and obscene and evil matters Ibn Abi Dunya narrated from Ibn Abbas that he uh, was asked, also this is uh, authentic, from Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhumah. He was asked, which of the deeds is best? He answered, 
Zikrullahi Akbar, the remembrance of Allah is the greatest. Like same answer as from Salman, radiallahu anhu, and Ibn Abbas. Both of them, they answered the same. About what are the best of the deeds? The answer is Zikr of Allah is greatest, is the greatest deed. Uh, in the Sunan, from the hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha, from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and this hadith has weakness in it, although it's very famous during the time of Hajj, right? It says that the tawaf circling the house and circling uh, as-safa and al-marwa and to throw the stones, Rami al-Jimar, it was only made for the remembrance of Allah Ta'ala. It's narrated by Abu Dawood and At-Tirmidhi and some scholars do authenticate it but Allah knows best it has weakness in it. He is trying to establish that. What? What is the benefit? Uh, yeah, and that we are going through now, benefit number 55, is that a dhikr, a dhikr is what? Hmm? The remembrance of Allah is all the deeds are reg legislated for the remembrance of Allah. So here, as salah aqim as salat li dhikri And they went through this, right? And uh, as salah according to the ayah of Al-Ankabut, and according to how Shaykh al-Islam explained it, that salah has two objectives. The best objective of the two, the better one of the two, is that it will make you remember Allah. Right? And here he brings this hadith, which there is discussion about its authenticity, that the hajj circling the house and between Safa and Marwa and stoning, all of that is legislated for the establishment of the remembrance of Allah. And you know, the meaning of it is nice. Right? The meaning of it is nice. Right? So here he's saying, all the good deeds are legislated in order for one to remember and mention Allah. And this shows that a dhikr is, is very great. And according to these narrations that he mentioned here, it is the greatest. Right? The greatest of the deeds is uh, a dhikr. Right? طيب. So that was benefit number 55. He explained in it the ayah from Surah Taha and also uh, the ayah from Surah Al-Ankabut. Right? Also, he mentioned other ayat also, like uh, the Surah Al-Baqarah, Al-Quruni, al kurkum And he mentioned also the ayat which has the lamb of the time. Right? The lamb of the time. Now, uh, having said this, there is a famous hadith which is unauthentic before someone ask, uh, asks me about it <laughs> the sheikh did not mention it but it's uh, famous where uh, it says man lam tanha salatu an al fahshai wal munkar lam yazdad min allah illa bu'dan the one whose salah does not forbid him from obscene matters and sins then he wouldn't be increased by it except being far away from allah right this hadith is not authentic Right? This hadith is not authentic. Right? Yani it's, uh, uh, it's saying if your salah does not forbid you from evil, then by praying you will be far away from Allah. <laughs> right? That's what it's saying. This hadith is unauthentic. Rather, there is another hadith which is authentic, which says that a man came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said to him, Inna fulanan yusalli bil fa asbaha saraq. So and so, he prays at night. Hmm? When the morning comes, he steals. He prays at night. When the morning comes, he steals. So Rasulullah sallallahu told him, فقال, ma taqul. He said, surely, what you're saying about him will stop him from that. Yani, the fact that he is praying, this will 
end up stopping him from stealing. Right? The fact that he prays, it will end up making him, you know, stop stealing. <laughs> right? So he should continue to pray. Yani, the one who is uh, praying but he's falling into some sins, you don't tell him. <laughs> <laughs> your salah will make you farther away from Allah right <laughs> it should be the opposite that you encourage him that continue to pray and stop the sins that you are doing right not telling him you know this salah is nothing and you know stop salah so anyways that, that other one is famous but it's not authentic the other hadith inshallah is the authentic one and this matches the ayah which says that surely a salah forbids one from obscene uh, and evil sins. طيب. Benefit number 56. He said that the best of the people of every action, the best of the people of every action, uh, uh, the best uh, are the ones who mention Allah the most in it. So, the best of the fasting people are the most in remembering Allah in their fasting. And the best of those who donate are the most in remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. And the best of the pilgrims are the most in remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. And likewise the rest of the deeds. He said, that Ibn Abi Dunya, he mentioned a hadith that is a mursal hadith. Mursalan, yani uh, pendant, and there is a drop from the uh, narrators in there, which is basically uh, not authentic, uh, is not an authentic hadith. Uh, that uh, the Prophet ﷺ was asked, which of the people of the masjid are best? He said, the most in remembering Allah Azza wa he, it was said, which of the funerals are uh, best? He said, the most in remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. He was asked, and the people who go to a funeral, who is the best amongst them? The best who is the one who yani, remember Allah the most. F who, who amongst the warriors, Mujahideen, is best? He said, the most amongst them in remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. He, it was said, who amongst the pilgrims is best? He said, the ones who remember Allah the most Azza wa Jal. They said, and who is the best amongst the servants? Ayyul ibadi khair? He answered, the most amongst them in remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, Abu Bakr said, that the, those who remember Allah took all the good. They have taken all that is uh, good. And as I mentioned, this, has, uh, this, this narration has weakness in it. It's a weak narration. But the meaning of it is, is nice. Uh, he said... Um, Mm -hmm. He boasts, yeah. Mm -hmm. About the good deed, among them is a child to become a high advantage. So this is also something, what is connection between Allah and charity? I did not get your question. Uh, let's finish this one and then we go back to your question, inshallah. Uh, he mentions a statement of Ubaid ibn Umair. Uh, he said that if this night became greater for you than to go through the pain of praying at night that is if the night time in a'zamakum hadha al-layl an tukabidu if the night time was too big for you to go through the difficulties of praying at night wa bakhiltum ala al-mali an tunfiqu and you were stingy from spending the money وَجَبُنْتُمْ عَنِ الْعَدُوِ أَن تُقَاتِلُوهُ and if you are, are uh, coward to fight the enemy then فَأَكْفِرُوا مِنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ then 
mention Allah Azza wa Jal a lot. So if night prayer is too much for you to handle, and if the money is too dear to you to spend it, right? You're stingy, you don't want to pay it, miserly. And if you are cowardly to meet the enemy, to join in the fight, fi sabirillah, then uh, do a lot of the remembrance of Allah uh, Azza wa Jal. Uh, this is uh, a statement from one of the tabi'een. Uh, it is also mentioned uh, from one of the Sahaba. Uh, I don't remember the companion now from his statement. And it is mentioned as a hadith also. And um, Sheikh Al Albani uh, authenticates it. Uh, Sheikh Al Albani authenticates it in uh, Sahih Al Jama' with a wording that is similar to this. Uh, the Sheikh, uh, uh, the Sheikh uh, did not uh, did not mention it. He did not mention the wording of it. He did not mention the uh, wording of this uh, hadith. Uh, inshallah, maybe I will mention it to you another time so I don't waste your time here. I should have written it down. But uh, wording that is similar to this is mentioned as an authentic hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu As I said, the uh, Shaykh Al-Albani authenticates it in Sahih Al-Jama'. Uh, and there is another statement that is uh, يعني, a statement of one of the companions عنهم, he said a statement like this so this has a backing and uh, if you uh, remember uh, well uh, this will be explained actually with the next uh, with the next point uh, which says uh, that uh, which is point number 57 benefit number 57 it says that continuously uh, doing dhikr, it will replace, it will replace the different uh, voluntary uh, deeds and will take its place. تَقُومُ مَقَامَهَا إِدَامَتُهُ تَنُوبُ عَنِ التَّطَوَعَاتِ وَتَقُومُ مَقَامَهَا Whether these deeds are bodily uh, uh, actions or uh, financial uh, voluntary actions, or badaniya maliya, or uh, mixed of bodily uh, and financial uh, matters like hajj tatawa, like uh, pilgrimage that is voluntary. Mm -hmm. And this has come explicitly in the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu an, that the poor of the uh, muhajireen they came to the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they said, "O oh, Messenger of Allah, the people." Uh, of money, the people who are wealthy, they have gone with the high degrees and the everlasting bliss, everlasting enjoyment. They said, they pray like we pray, they fast like we fast, and they have extra money by which they perform pilgrimage, they perform umrah, and they perform jihad, and they donate. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to them, Shall I not teach you something by which you will catch up with those who preceded you? And you outrace by it those who are behind you. And no one will be better than you except the one who does like you do. They said, of course, yes, of course, O Messenger of Allah. So he said, Tusabbihun, you say, subhanallah. وتحمدون you say الحمد لله وتكبرون you say الله أكبر behind every salah at the end of every salah after every salah this hadith is agreed upon متفق عليه by Bukhari and Muslim so in this hadith Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم he made a dhikr as a replacement for what they missed of حج عمرة جهاد and he informed that they will even beat them they will outrace premier and pioneer them with this dhikr with this dhikr so when the people who are wealthy Ahlul Duthur 
they heard this, they started doing it too. They acted upon it. So they were increased to their uh, donations and their ibadah, their acts of worship. They were increased uh, with uh, whatever they are doing of acts of worship. They were increased with this dhikr that they learned now. They heard about it. So they attained the two excellences. They attained the two excellences. So the poor amongst the Muslims, they wanted now to compete with them again. And they mentioned the messen to the Messenger وسلم, that they are partnering them with this now. They are sharing with them the same reward. And when Faradu Anhum, and they are sharing with them this reward and they now uh, single-handedly now they are uh, getting the rewards for that which the poor they have no ability to achieve yani because they have the money which by which they perform hajj and umrah jihad and sadaqa right so rasulullah sallallahu said to them ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء he said that is the bounty that is the excellence of allah he gives it to whomever he wills Right? And the fact that the wealthy Muslims now, they started doing the tasbih and the tahmid and the takbir, and now they have still the extra things that they do with their money. Right? So Rasulullah told them that this is the excellence of Allah. Yani the money that has granted, he has granted to the wealthy Muslims, this is yani, a bounty and a favor from him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. He gives it to whomever he wills. In the hadith of Abdullah ibn Busr, this hadith is agreed upon and it's in different books of hadith. It's a very famous hadith. Uh, in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Busr, who said that uh, a Bedouin Arab came to the Messenger وسلم, and he said to him that the good qualities uh, or the qualities of Al Islam and its legislations have been so abundant for me. And Islam has many legislations, salah and siyam and zakah and hajj and sadaqah and voluntary actions, right? So there are so many. فَأَخْبِرْنِي بِأَمْرٍ جَامِعٍ يَكْفِينِي Tell me a, a, a collective matter that will suffice me. He wants one, one thing to hold on to. So he said, عَلَيْكَ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ He said, I counsel you to stick to the remembrance of Allah. He said, and it is going to be sufficient for me, O oh Messenger of Allah. He said, yes, and there will be extra, uh, there will be extra remaining uh, from uh, that. Now this hadith has uh, passed uh, before, but with a wording that is a little bit uh, different, uh, with a wording that is a little bit different, uh, that uh, other wording uh, is uh, an authentic hadith with this wording. So I will mention that wording uh, because the other one يعني, has some extra in it. Um, this narration, it says that, uh, O Messenger of Allah, that the doors of good are so many and I cannot establish all of them. I have no ability to establish all of them. So inform me of something that I should hold on to. Do not tell me a lot. So in, in the end I will forget. So in one narration it says the legislations of Islam are uh, abundant for me and I have grown old. So inform me of something that I should stick to. So he said to him, لا يزال لسانك رطبا بذكر الله تعالى. Let your tongue continue to be moist with the remembrance of Allah uh, Taala. With the remembrance of Allah uh, Taala, which now it, it gives us basically the same meaning that, uh, يعني sticking to a dhikr will be replacing, will work as a replacement for many of uh, the good deeds and yesterday we mentioned the hadith of uh, يعني, the, uh, uh, that the dhikr uh, some of the adhkar are worth setting slaves free and worth uh, having horses 
donating them for uh, the strive, striving in the cause of Allah and so on and so forth. He mentioned a number of uh, things, right? And sadaqah and so on and so forth. And this point here just affirms uh, uh, that. So uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, hadith now. Uh, he says, the Sheikh said that uh, this man, there is nothing more beloved to him than to seek nearness to Allah with the legislated uh, acts or the legislations of Islam. So Rasulullah Sallallahu guided him to that which will enable him to the Islamic legislations and what will make uh, the Islamic legislations easy uh, for him with it. And that is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is uh, he will move on to the next point. Yani what he's saying here is that when you remember Allah much, it will replace doing a lot of good deeds. On top of that, it will facilitate for you. It will make easy for you to do the other actions because you are from those who remember Allah much. This will make easy for you to do the rest of the Islamic legislations. This man is asking, guide me to something that I should stick to. So he guided him to a dhikr which will replace a lot of uh, actions and will help him to do the other actions or the other legislated actions in uh, Al-Islam. I think we will uh, stop here this time. As I said last time, that uh, insha'Allah, um, that uh, yani, uh, that insha'Allah, we will uh, try to um, uh, we will, yani after after Maghrib today, we will be doing al uh, aqidah again. The Islamic beliefs. Next week we have uh, from uh, Saturday from Asr till Isha, and then the following Saturday also we still have from Asr until Isha. I don't expect us to finish both books by then, right? Uh, but then, uh, still the final test will be on the twentieth. Inshallah, we will do the final test on the twentieth. And whatever remains, whatever remains from each book, we will continue the next two weekends, inshallah, on Saturdays until we finish the book. But since we said that we're going to be the, doing the test on the 20th, we will just keep it at the 20th, inshallah. And with this, we will be covering, we would have covered most of the book, inshallah. So there is plenty to test you about. Inshallah, <laughs> so uh, you will be okay. Inshallah, you will be doing very well. Inshallah, Taala. <laughs> so that's what we will do. Inshallah, uh, yani we will continue uh, next week. Uh, inshallah, Taala.